Um, hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and uh, this is yet another stream for building products with JavaScript where we talk Electron stuff and uh, today I want to continue uh, removing um, YouTube DL from the app and um, actually moving finally towards the authentication for Crunchyroll. So last time, as you remember, we failed spectacularly to remove the YouTube DL because uh, Crunchyroll uses AES encryption on their subtitles. Well, um, I actually went ahead and um, finished it. So because there was not that much to finish, actually. So the encryption was the last part. So this is where we finished last time. And basically, as you can see here, I added this, um, I added this decode and bytes to ASS um, functions which I actually haven't written myself, but you know, this is like, um, I'm, I keep doing the same silly mistakes. So I keep reinventing the wheel and keep trying to write what's already existing there. So not only was in Python there, but there is a crunchyroll.js package from a user named Deathspike uh, that already does everything that we need. So if we go into the source code and look at the subtitle, you will see a decode function that uses the crypto and big int and zlib to actually decode the subtitles. And this is exactly what we have over here. So as you can see here, I copied the uh, basically that this is adapted code. It's not one to one because he uses TypeScript and I'm using uh, ES6. I also converted some functions into promises so we can actually await them without um, using callbacks because you know, this is nicer. Uh, so it, it, but basically it, it's based on that, right? So it's, it's, it's working perfectly fine. And then there's the same, again, this is from the same repository. There's the ASS parser that takes the uh, XML that is a uh, result of this encrypted thing and then parses it and converts it into the actual ASS subtitles. So um, one trick, basically before we written the subtitles into the hard drive, right? So that was not very convenient. And we actually, I think, I think I still have like, um, wait a second, application support, um, wait, it's gonna be PGS Electron, um, Crunchyroll. Yeah, we still have all that stuff that is actually downloaded. So we don't really need that, right? So if we uh, LS that and I oh, wait, I actually wanted to do RM here. So we don't actually need that. We, we won't be writing anything um, to the hard drive yet, at least. So the thing is, is that I take the text and create um, application octet binary blob out of it. And then I use the create uh, object URL and provide that as a subtitle. So when, when the fetch tries to fetch it, it sees, okay, this is a data URL. So I'm just gonna immediately get the data back. So this way we don't actually have to download anything again or you know store it on a hard drive or anything. So uh, if I show it to you right now, if we open again the Berserk for example and go for like episode 15 or whatever, you will see that uh, we have everything working now. Um, everything including subtitles, video, scrubbing, whatever you can imagine, it all works perfectly fine. and. Uh, all of this is live streamed. I mean, okay, subtitles are in memory, but you know, hey, it works. So we, uh, kind of, or okay, I kind of defeated it on my own, but again, you know, I reused existing stuff and I should have just went ahead and looked if there's already uh, existing fixed solutions for this because doing that myself is not a smart thing to do. <laughs> now, um, let us jump into the authentication part. So right now, we can only uh, view and load the um, existing uh, free files, right? So whatever is uh, free on a service, like for example, if you open Berserk, you'll see this crown image here. This means the episode is actually premium so that unless you are a subscriber, you won't be able to see it. Plus subscribers get a higher quality. Uh, so actually interested what's gonna happen if I try to run that. And um, I actually am able to view it. So I guess they don't actually implement any restrictions on that. That is very curious. Okay. But you know what? We're gonna, now we're gonna need to authenticate anyway because uh, we're gonna be getting the my serious stuff from there, right? Plus, I mean, if you enjoy this stuff and if you use the service, you gotta pay for it. So um, I mean, I want my stuff here and I'm paying for it anyway. So we are gonna implement authenticate method here and um, 
um, this is what we are gonna do today, I guess. So, um, Auth method, yeah. Um, first of all, I guess we have to actually somehow remember whether we are, are authenticated or not. So, um, let me think. Um, so, I mean, I guess we can create an Auth database here, uh, PouchDB Auth, right? So this is gonna be um, an authentication database. And um, in the very beginning, before we actually, um, okay, we, we actually don't need the target folder anymore as far as I understand, right? We're not using it anywhere. Yeah, so we, we can kill off this part completely. And uh, now, a lot of parameters. So uh, the thing is that basically authentication is just cookies that a uh, website provides, right? So in this case, um, co cookies, uh, let's call it auth cookies for consistency sake. And now we're gonna be saying db auth. Um, okay, now I need a pouch db, pouch db API because I already forgot how to use it. Uh, that's a minor thing. So we're gonna basically we're gonna try and get um, document. There we go. So get my document. Uh, this is going to be document ID. Yeah, so we're gonna say get. Um, okay, and that means we actually need some sort of an init method here, right? So which means that it makes sense now to export a class not um, not not just an object so that we have some sort of initial or uh, initial in initialization procedure that would actually do stuff crunchyroll yes capital c please there you go so constructor yes and that would mean that we actually need to reformat that because commas on the end don't really need to be there and uh, ta 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 so we don't need that we don't need that and that and in this case so what, what, what are the error what do you don't like create this uh, yeah no sort of okay so we got our constructor here uh, which means that this oath cookies um, and it's gonna be Okay, let's do an. We actually need a sync method, right? So we're gonna do. We need a sync uh, init method, which is gonna do that, and um, we're gonna put that over here. I'm, I'm thinking like, do we are, do we really need that, or can we just do that? I mean, I think yeah, that would be best to just use a class in this case because then you know if we have more logic, we can actually control when the class is ready. So we can say this of cookies, um, which means in this case, we should say this of cookies is null, right? So that we actually have some reference point. Oh, wait. Um, Crunchyroll. So we're gonna get the cookies from Crunchyroll thing. And I think that is it, right? So we then we have a with method, which um, so let's let's just do that. Let's just log it uh, with cookies, just you know, just to um, actually see that this stuff works. And uh, right, if if I export it right now, here we will actually import um, class, but we need to. So what we need to do is we need to export already constructed class. So we're just gonna do. Um, this, I guess for now, we'll see if, if we actually need some sort of a factory or whatever. Uh, yes, we got that. Okay. And uh, theoretically, if we do yarn start now, we should see that the cookies are null. Uh, and it is not. Oh, right. I forgot this here. Yep, I did. There we go. Uncaught, uh, not found. Mm, error true message missing name reason missing status 404 so I guess you're gonna have to do try catch here right try K 
catch e. So if e is um, what was it? Name not found. Name um, yes equals not found. Then this auth cookies is now we just reset it in case they've been set to anything else. And um, otherwise throw no we don't we don't need to throw right we just need to okay we we're gonna implement some sort of an error messaging system later on let's just go with this for now yeah so now we go with cookie zero uh, null and now we need some way to call this auth function but I guess for now we're just gonna um, take it uh, say home page and just yeah the same way that we did it um, so we do Crunchyroll Oath, right? So we just need to trigger it once, trigger Oath indication, and um, then, so basically the idea is that we can of course just ask user to give us login and password, but that might not work because uh, if you actually open the Crunchyroll, you, okay, maybe not now, but um, let's see, maybe if I try to open it in an incognito tab, no, it does work anyway. So th the thing is they use the like anti bot uh, thing that if you have some weird requests from your API, I IP, sorry, or if there's too many requests and stuff like this, you will get this, um, I think it's the Cloudflare or something along those lines, the JavaScript thing that will be like, hey, wait five seconds. And then the JavaScript will trigger some function that will actually redirect you to the main page and then you can log in. And then during login, not only you have to fill out login and password, but there is also sometimes captcha from Google, which is, you know, we, there's no way to do that um, with, with like auto automatically. So the idea is we're not going to ask a user to give his login and password. We're actually going to do it kind of all with styles. We're going to open the new window with uh, Crunchyroll there. And we're going to ask a user to just log in into it as he usually does. Um, for that, we need electron.js reference, because once again, I don't remember how to properly create windows there. Um, and then we're just going to create a new window. Um, wait a second, where's the docs? Uh, docs, there we go. So, um, you know what? Electron, electron.js new window. For whatever reason, it's usually faster to do it this way. Uh, proper way to open a new window. There we go. So uh, we need, is it just a new browser window? Yes, it is. Okay, so we need this uh, remote and then from remote we get, I think we already had remote, right? No, we don't. We Okay, I removed it because we didn't use that thing. Okay, so we get the remote and we already have electron required actually. So we do electron remote, get the browser window and then we get the window. Um, so we get our window with hate and uh, in this case, so I guess we can look at the browser window docs now. Um, yeah, load URL, so this is what we want and we just say, um, we actually have the base URL, right? So that should be, no, it should be not the base URL, it should be, what is the, is it slash login, um, Crunchyroll, Come on, um, login, it is uh, slash login. I mean, we don't care much about next. Oh yeah, that's actually the checking browser thing. Exactly. So, okay, so we're gonna go for slash login here. And next, I, yeah, okay, let's let's leave it at this. This doesn't matter. Lot of crunchy roll login page. So this is uh, create new um, electron browser window, right? And then what we also need is we actually need to tap into um, events. So, okay, we first of all, clean up on close. This is something that we need to do. And in this case, we actually need to say that this is a let because you cannot reassign const, but uh, we do want to clean up, right? So we don't want any of those like huge windows in memory. 
Um, yeah, 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 right. Okay, there we go. Okay, you want a proper formatting, no one-liners for me today, I guess. Okay, and then uh, there should be an event ready to show. Uh, no, this is not what we want. There was an event or like, um, wait a second, there should be event, wait, is it a direct event of window? Yes, it is. Okay, so there should be an event that says basically the page loaded. Event um, application command, that's not what we want. Loaded, preload, preload, no, that is not. Event, event reloaded. Um, on load or something, no. Load URL, loading, ready to show. Okay, where, again, where's the events? One more second, okay, instance events. Close page title updated, closed unresponsive, responsive, focus, blur, hide, show, move, moved, enter. Um, okay, maybe we don't need the event on the window itself, but on the something inside of it. Ah, oh, web contents, there we go. So we actually want web contents, ah, there you go. So we need to tap into this web contents thing. And again, events. So those are the events. Did stop loading, did get DOM ready. Um, what do they use here? Finished load. Okay, is there a finished load event now? Because I know how Stack Overflow tends to be. It's like you look at up some snippet, then you go try it out and it turns out it's like 20 versions older than what you have and it doesn't work. Okay, wait for... Uh, page to finish loading, right? And uh, okay, uh, we're already shown, so we're fine. What we actually need to do is, uh, no, that's not what I want. So let's see, contents, um, can I access the URL somehow? Download URL is definitely not what I want. Get URL, okay, console log loaded. URL. And then um, we need to access cookies as well, right? So let's see. Uh, I, I imagine they will be here in the web content as well. But let's see, okay, electron, electron JS cookies. Um, access cookies from electron cookie, how to add that Come on, no, that's not what I want. How to get the data of cookie in browser window. Exactly, that's what we want. And there is no answer here as far as I can tell. So let's see how to manipulate cookies. I think it was some, I mean, yeah, one way is would be to use the execute JavaScript, but that sounds like a backwards way of doing it. So. Uh, web content session cookies. Okay, so we need a session object. Uh, session. Yeah, okay, um, there is no, ah, yeah, there is a link. Okay, so web content session. Um, session cookies. Ah, there you go. And this is basically should be array of cookies. Okay, um, let's try run it. So theoretically, we should see another window now. There you go. And yeah, as you can see, so we get hit by Cloudflare right off the bat. And uh, in a moment, we should see the login screen. Nice. So we can actually um, enter my credentials. So thank you, LastPass, for um, handy experience of entering my stuff. Okay. So it is now logged in, I believe. And uh, now we get this object. Okay, the object is something, something. So it's not exactly the get is a proxy function. Uh, is there a way to get all of them? Cookies. Session cookies. Uh, cookies object for the session. So uh, exactly, I extract them out of there. Uh, do, 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 electron. Session cookies. Okay, there is a markdown docs. I imagine they should be more or less the same, right? From partition default session, clear cache, set proxy. Hmm. 
So, okay, first of all, we need to check if if the URL um, equals this one. So basically, if, if we are redirected to um, homepage, which means authentication is successful, right? Um, or maybe we should do it in a different way. I mean, because, um, whoops, it's not the page I want. Because if we're redirected to home, that doesn't necessarily mean that we logged in successfully, right? Or no, it does mean because otherwise it will throw an error. So we're good. Um, get a user string, session cookies, cookies object. There we go. Session default session gets, ah, okay. This is what we want, get all cookies. And it's an async method, okay. So yeah, there we go, load it. Uh, yes, there we go. And now we want to do this. So we take all of that stuff, put it here. And then um, got cookies. Uh, so I, I wonder if it actually saves the, the session somehow in the app itself. So if we reload right now and we get a second window, we'll be already authorized or? Yeah, we are. Can I read cookies of undefined? So I guess there is no default session in this case. So is it just session? So and that basically means that once we are logged in once, unless the app logs us out, we are good. There is 50 cookies, holy crap. Domain expiration date. Uh, okay, and then we actually need to store those cookies. So this is cookies array, right? Which means that, um, so if, okay, I mean, if error, we can just say console error for now. And then once we get to error uh, getting cookies, I mean, that that is probably not gonna happen, but you know, just to be safe. I always got cookies, uh, cookies, and then we are gonna say, we're gonna say this auth cookies equals cookies, and we're gonna say we await db auth, uh, where's the pouch db, create update doc, we need put, so put uh, underscore ID is Crunchyroll and cookies is just gonna be an array, right? And this function has to be a sync because um, we wanna wait for it. Uh, no, wait, what? A sync, there we go. And um, let's just do saved cookies. And now if we restart it, Ah, right. So basically, once we save them, we actually need to close the window. Theoretically, because I mean, we're already authorized, so we don't really need the window anymore, right? And um, so which means win close, right? So um, store cookies and close window. Okay, if auth was successful, get all cookies, store them, close the window. Okay, and then the thing is that we only need to trigger auth if, if this auth cookies is um, not now then we can basically say, hey, we're already authorized. So lock all already authorized this auth cookies, right? Okay, here's the question. Will it load cookies faster than it, no, it won't. <laughs> okay, um, so here's what we need to do is we need to actually I mean, it's already working. So the idea would be to actually remove this from here and uh, create a proper like page that will have a login button on it, right? So, um, but we also do need this, I guess we can just do it here. 
um, no, um, yeah, no, okay. I mean, init is called from the, yeah, so from the constructor, so it should be good, it should load them anyway. Um, right, so we need a login button and we need a logged in state actually, so what, I wonder if cookies would be enough, I guess, for now it would be. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's okay for now, let's see. Let's see if that works out. Okay, so we need our uh, home page, and then um, I guess I'm gonna take like one of those headers we're using here and paste it down here, right? So we don't need this back button, uh, but now let's say now right now item. Um, yes, it's going to be settings, settings, and there was a font awesome icon for um, a cog or something among those lines. Um, yes, uh, settings, cog, exactly. This is what I want, FA cog, okay, so it's just a fake cog, and um, click we actually can do this as um, with our serious thing. We're using a link here, right? No, we're not. That is interesting. Uh, click open serious page. Oh yeah, because we're pushing the um, current to the database here, but we don't really need that in this case, I think. I think I'll use a link here, no. Um, okay, I mean, I guess we can just also push the location, but now that's that sounds dumb. Let's let's just use a proper link. So in this case, import link from uh, React router DOM, and in this case, we need to say link link, and this is gonna be two settings, right? Okay, so if I reload the app now, we should see, yep, we got the settings button now, and uh, if I press it, nothing actually happens because it'll be like, hey, yes, no th settings page. So this is what we are gonna add right now. Um, I'm gonna exact path um, settings. It's gonna be settings here, and we're gonna import settings from settings okay um, new page settings JS so we're gonna save that and I guess I'm gonna hop copy home here um, so let's see mh1 uh, settings just just to see that it actually works the routing first uh, we don't need anything from state here so I'm gonna command that out we don't really need anything in here yet. I don't know, like we're see, we're gonna see if that's, it's gonna be required. So this state is just gonna be an object. Um, we don't need components. We don't need databases or anything. We don't need a link observable. So there should be just a react here really. Settings and in this case, I'm going to take the series and copy that nav thing from here. Because this is exactly what we want here with the back button and uh, link to yeah, okay, I need a link here. Okay, um, there we go. So we need that. Okay, um, whoop. my uh, hyper app seems to have once again, disappeared i like this is the major one of the most like i think it's the last major annoyance i have left with it that it just occasionally for whatever reason maybe it's due to the plugin that i used it like just does just the they like pop up from the top okay so here we have our settings thing um what we need to do is we need to actually um, take our, so this actually should be exported as an array, right? Because we're gonna have more than one 
uh, no wait a second so this is yeah okay let's let's just stick to one but the, the idea is that we need some sort of an array later on because we will have multiple uh, plugins but okay let's stick with whatever we have for now so we got the settings which means there should be div class name uh, content div right and then here so I, I'm just gonna import um, our packages uh, import crunchyroll from um, I know that's too much API uh, from API yeah exactly and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say crunchyroll draw settings for example let's call it this way so basically the idea is that we offload this functionality to um, the the plugin itself so that um, any plugin can provide any th settings that he actually wants right so in this case we are going to say um I don't, like okay let's wrap it into div because why the hell not um button login and then on click it should call this out right uh, but that should be an arrow function because this should be bound to the object we are using and uh, okay const log it in is going to be this oath cookies not equal now so right if, if they're now we're not logged in if um and i guess we need to say okay class Wait a second, let me think. Um, what do we have? So we need sort of to draw some sort of a card or something among those lines to make it like distinguish from all the other part or the other components or elements. Mm, components, card maybe? maybe? No, that's... Yeah, well, let's use a card, why not? So this can be a card. Uh, it can have a header, yes, why not? So the header will be um, name uh, Crunchyroll, right? And then we don't need an icon here. Format that. Um, and then header, and then we need to have the content. Uh, I don't know if we need the content, but or whatever. Let's just do this. Crunchyroll settings cards, whatever. We can tweak that later. And then we need a footer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in this case, um, basically we need, uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say logged in. If we are logged in, we are gonna show Okay, a class name, card footer item, draft CR login, a, right? So this is what we're gonna show. Otherwise, we are gonna show logout button, uh, no wait, logout, there we go. And again, a href CR logout and on click we are gonna add um, this logout function format okay what do you don't like here you just formatted this yourself nation of 14 but found 16 here expected can you decide already okay i think i need to tweak my es linder c a bit more because the prior sometimes formats it in in a different way than the linter wants it um okay so we have the oath function and we need the logout function right which means this oath cookie is now and um, this should be a sync and then we need to await um 
put cookies null, right? So we just reset them. Okay, so we got that. And I think if we run it now, we should actually go to settings and see a nice Crunchyroll um, card, which is a bit too big. Right, okay. Um, content, let's do it like this columns. Um, div class name column. So basically, we can then use one column per um, provider and uh, draw a bunch of cards that would look decent let's put it this way no it's it's anyway it looks like this because i guess it's because one call only one column there but uh why do we have login here now we have logout okay so i guess it so i guess we need to either wait for init or so we need some way of controlling the init function right so that we don't really uh we don't really want to Why does it take so long to init? I mean, I, it's, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, wait a second. Let's try that again. Uh, so we opened it, and there, there you go. The old cookies are already there. But if I open it, it says login. And it doesn't make any sense. Let's see here. This old cookies not equal null. They are not null. So if we are logged in, oh, um, yeah, of course. It is simply because I'm an idiot. And not here, it should be over here, right? There you go. Okay, now that should work properly. Yep, cool. So we are actually locked in, which means, I mean, I guess let's commit that. And uh, let us try to, no, first, let us try to log out and see that it actually works. Settings, log out. Um, conflict, document, update, conflict. Uh, did I, I guess I did something wrong. Oh yeah, because I don't need to put, I need to run update, right? Um, post get um where is the create update doc so how do i update again get remove then get bulk docs i mean we can just remove it but um maybe update where's the update yeah let's just remove it because like who the hell i mean at the moment that should be fine right because um whoops remove because we don't really store anything else in there. Yeah, doc ID, okay. So we should just do that and... Okay, so now, let's see. Now we should not be, no, we are still, oh yeah, because it didn't remove anything. Log out, uh, index is 82. What did you not find there? Um, not found, missing. Okay, that is weird doc ID. Oh, I need to provide doc ID and doc revision. Um, put get. Okay, that is again a bit. Delete the doc is required to be a document with at least an ID. Okay, so I can just say, no, I cannot say ID, right? Because it has to be at least ID and a revision. Okay, so which means that once we get that, uh, yeah, so we just need to say, re no, wait, so basically this means that we do reverse. So we first they remove this document and then we say, now clean it from the memory. And that should work. Yes, indeed, okay. Uh, so if I restart it now, we should see that we are uh, not actually logged in, right? Yeah, there you go. If we go settings, we click login, we should get the um, Crunchyroll web page. It already remembers our cookies, so it all works, and our cookies will get saved, and everything is perfectly fine, so we can um, commit that. Git add, 
git commit add way to um okay let's add set settings page for providers and add way to login into crunchyroll right so now that we have a login uh we need to use those cookies right so uh let's see axios cookies this is what we're interested in um axios cookie jar support it seems like it should be inside of the axios itself um ta -ta 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 -ta, axios cookies uh really it doesn't have cookie support that seems weird as hell for a HTTP client. Okay, let's search for a cookie here. Um, doesn't send cookies with post and data. With credentials, query string, query string. Okay, so wait, how the hell do I set cookies actually? Um, enable cookies, yes. It's not supported at the moment, please see 48. No JS cookie jar support. Pet uh, cookie deletion in server, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, I mean, one way would be to set those cookies. I mean, is it actually, you know what? Let's, let's just check. I mean, maybe it's already sending the cookies with the request in the first place. It's then we don't even need to store them just for the sake of a reference, right? Um, the, no, this is, where's my, because it goes through Node.js, right? That's the problem. Uh, yeah, okay, so it sends a request from the node, so we cannot actually see it in here, which is a bit annoying um, let me think Maxius <sighs> right uh, cookie persistent session support third party module so I mean we have to switch access for something that actually supports cookies it is Axios cookie jar. Uh, using a plugin would work. Okay, let's give it a shot, I guess. Axios cookie jar. So we'll look how that works. Um, Axios cookie jar support. A tough cookie to, um, wait, that was, those are not the modules mentioned. So there's this one and it was Axios tough cookie, maybe that works. No, this is what? That is kind of ridiculous. Node Axios cookie jar. I imagine that's exactly the one that we see here, right? Um, yep. Okay. I mean, let, let's try that. Why the hell not? Um, So, yeah, no, that seems, come on. Okay, uh, we can of course switch to something like request.js or whatever else for HTTP requests. But like, oh, come on, I wanna rewrite all the requests. Ugh. I think how you should be implemented in a plugin. Um, yeah, good for you, where the hell is that plugin? Cookies, yes, ecosystem. Cookie jar support. Uh, okay, so they decided that cookies is not an integral feature of a request library. 
Cool. Okay, I guess let's try this one. Uh, whoops, right. I forgot odd yarn odd. Okay. So we are gonna import that from here, right? And then uh, our package is okay. Enable cookie support for Axios. And then jar cookie jar, right? So uh, which means that here in our request is going to be it's going to be URL method is going to be get and then jar is going to be this uh, with cookies, right? Um, yeah, get all serious page. Okay, and then this do oh, whoops, that is not what I intended to press. Data equals R data. Okay, and then I'm just gonna console log R so we can actually inspect that object and see if the uh, cookies are added as intended. Um, in read property backup options of what? What? Okay, yeah, that obviously doesn't work. Which is unfortunate, very unfortunate. Uh, but I mean, I guess, you know what? Maybe. I'm curious if it really maybe just sends the cookies together in the first place because we're running it over the electron. So let's kill that part. Um, kill that part. Whoops. Remove, right? So kill that. And we want to see if there are any cookies in the so log R in the response or in the request actually, right? Request with credentials false. Headers, uh, no, there is no cookie header, but I mean, maybe if we set with credentials true Okay, let's see. Um, I wonder if that will solve it. With credentials. So Axios URL with credentials true. Okay, let's give it a shot. Um, request with credentials true. So now it is true. Do we have cookies? No, nope, we don't have anything. Upload um, request response URL. Error headers. Okay. Hmm. Yep, I guess that won't work. Okay, so we need to basically replace. We need to replace the Axios with um, other library that um, yarn. Let's go to yarn website and see HTTP client promise. So I mean, request is an obvious like pick. I used it and it works fine. Oh, they have a request promise now. Is that an official thing or is that, uh, let's see, GitHub, GitHub, GitHub. This is the official repo and this is, oh yeah, it is an official one. I will take that, thank you very much. Uh, model installed request is a peer dependency. Okay, so it's a wrapper essentially, all right. Request promise, let's add both. And that means we can just say that we require a request. Um, okay. From request promise, right? And that means that, okay, it returns body right away. So we actually don't care about, we say data 
request. Okay, um, and we need the request itself. So cookies, cookie jar. Oh, there is native even. That's even better actually because we don't need to pull. Yeah, let's let's go for that. Um, okay, wait a second. Uh, remove. And then yarn. Come on. Yarn add request promise native. So because you know we don't need to pull the Bluebird with us because we already have native promises. Why the hell would I want third party? Even though I think Bluebird is still a bit faster. Um, hi Tris, sorry I didn't notice your message up until now. A bit um, thinking about what the hell do I do now? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we got the native promises ready. Okay, now we need to rewrite the requests actually. Let's start with uh, get all. So we need, uh, what do we need? We need the URL and we need credentials. Uh, that is what, I think that was a cookie support. You can just say a jar, yeah, there you go. So you can just say jar, this, um, that should work, right? That with cookies and uh, wait a second. I was too hasty to close the promise native thing. Let us have a look here. So I guess the API are upgrade to request promise v4. So it's basically the same as request promise, but it is native. Okay, got it. Uh, then you write transform process. Uh, okay, there you can apply transforms. This is not something we actually want. Headers, JSON. We don't actually care about that as well. Okay, but we actually got get all serious. So let's see if that works. It's going to be a first step. And it does work. Cool. Uh, now, it will be really nice to see the uh, if we had a cookies there, but um, <laughs> I wonder if there's an electron Node.js uh, request inspect, something like Node.js request inspector or whatever. Electron inspector. Uh, wraps node inspector, which can be used to debug JavaScript coding running in the main pro. Yeah, that's what we need. Uh, so how do I do that? Uh, NPM run inspect main. So I just install the electron inspector thing. Okay, and then use it. Is that still actually five months ago. That's quite old. Is there an official tool for that? I mean, they, there got to be some official way. I oh, know they actually say use electron inspector. <laughs> okay. Um, node inspector for debug. Yeah, let's go with electron inspector. That seems to be a straightforward approach. <laughs> okay. Um, Yarn, uh, no, stop that. Yarn add def electron inspector. Uh, and uh, yeah, inspect main. Let's go with this script. So we can do this. I'm guessing there's some native packages in it. No, it's not. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Or I guess it just taps into the dev tools uh, remote protocol. Oh no, there is some native packages there. Okay. Um, there are no gip errors. Ew, that is always nasty. What do you don't like? That seems like it tries to node 51. Node gib three. Okay, it looks like it just compiles against the older V8 version. Ah, oh, oh, that is always ugly. Okay, um, let's remove that. Thank you very much. Okay, it didn't save anything. Um, it was clean, I think. Yeah. Okay, let us look at the other options because this is obviously not gonna work. Uh, node inspector. Yeah, so we can, I guess, use node inspector. Um, I mean, this should work fine as far as I know. 
and do npm minus g install node inspector inspector right m why did you yeah there you go okay and node pregip runtime electron fallback that is a one hell of a way to run update the target argument of your electron version number oh so you have to recompile oh god why is it so complicated okay yeah and then, yeah okay Ugh. really hmm okay uh wait a second i think we might be able to just log this thing i mean as much as i like debugging properly i like wasting my time doing that stuff okay no stop please i'm gonna remove you because screw that um so it returns three arguments right the first one is an error which is not returned in promises the next one is the body Where's the example? And the third one, I think, is the request itself. Come here. Uh, error response, but no, the other way around. Okay, so how the hell do I get response from here? Repos, um, post to JSON. Okay, well, let's have a look at the source code. Because I imagine it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Bluebird, okay, this is the Bluebird version. Request tells you require, require cache request, tough cookie. Um, configure model expert request, request by CLS. What should I actually do here? Configure, where this configure comes from? Um, what? Ah, there you go. Request promise core. Jesus, how many repositories do they have? Okay, request promise core. I guess this is the one. <laughs> okay, and uh, request next. Okay, this is like a bunch of configuration plumbing in it. Uh, okay, what is plumbing now? That is a very elaborate way to wrap request into promises. Okay, I assume that actually, um, okay, wait a second. So what do we do? We do, yeah, let's do it this way. Then A, B. So we're just gonna tap into this promise and say, okay, console log A, B to actually see if that's something and return A, which is the same first argument um yarn start there we go console so yeah okay so it doesn't actually return a response anymore which is a bit weird so how the hell do you access it now i okay promises in a sync await this is our part that is interesting right request Promise, okay. Um, by default, this uh, will cause the promise to be rejected. Option simple false, uh-huh. Now we can try that. Post to JSON, HTML, get full response instead of just by resolve with full response. Ah, there we go. Okay, so you just have to say this, and which means that it's gonna be response, and then the um, const data is gonna be response body or something among those lines, right? So if we console log r now, we should actually see if we get, if the cookies are set or not. Okay, cool. So we got our response. Uh, Row headers set cookie. Here's our cookies. Seem to be locked in properly. And uh, okay, this we're actually interested in request cookies, right? Uh, headers, no, should be in the cookie cookie jar. But it seems to be working fine, right? So I mean, we we can actually quite easily figure out if that works or not. 
so we don't need this in this case uh, so what we need okay let's convert all the other yeah so it's a request this right and again we don't need to destruct this anymore so it's going to be plain data request um, okay and uh, there was okay axios just search for it okay there's three more mentions so this is gonna be xml data request okay post headers data and i think the way there was a way to do xml multi-part form thing so it just needs to be form not data and i think it will actually encode that stuff automatically so i'm gonna just gonna do this okay um we don't need that anymore await request this is actually quite straightforward should i, I should have checked if the request js has um promises based version because this library is like one of the best ones out there definitely has all the features and doesn't need any plugins for cookie support okay um let's see axios no okay let let us try to actually open the other pages and see if everything still works let's go for berserk no error seems to be working let's open some episode and that seems to be working as well cool so we are good we migrated to uh, request js without any problems uh we don't need that here so what we do need though is to fetch uh we need that get my serious stuff right so okay instead of uh okay close settings close package json close that so let's let, let's do it this way instead of um first of all we need a database for that so we're gonna say uh, bookmarks for example right bookmarks uh, book that I mean we need two right we need bookmark series it's gonna be pouch DB uh, bookmark series and we need bookmark episodes right because we need to track all bookmark episodes uh, okay and in this case i'm gonna tweak home a bit to say bookmark series over here and then instead of uh get all series we're gonna use crunchyroll get my series and in this case this is gonna be what okay let me close all of that as i don't think we need that anymore at least um so Crunchyroll and um, I, I have to log in here as well. Come on. Okay, and we should go into Q, I think it's called, right? Yeah. So this is the URL that we're actually interested in. Const data equals await request. Um, this is gonna be again base URL and then slash home slash Q, okay. And let's just lock that data for now and see if it actually fetches anything. Uh, oh, wait, 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 that, that, that won't work, right? That won't work, that won't work because I am not actually giving it any cookies. So this are with cookies and um, yeah, I think we're good like this. Do we need anything else here? We need cookies, we need the URL. Okay, we don't actually need cookies here, right? Because we just fetched the plain list of all the series, so this is fine. Mm, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Ah, and it should be a sync, of course. Okay, let us see if that works. Uh, and caught status code error 503. 
Um, okay, what the hell? What does it says actually? Body, body, blah, blah, blah. This is all CSS. Um, DDoS protection by Cloudflare. Ah, okay, I hit the, I guess I hit the limit. Okay, let us go log out here. Let's try re-login. So now I'm gonna hit the same, no, this works fine, okay. That is a bit strange. I'm still hitting the same DDoS protection, but wait, I set the cookies, right? So they should be, unless the jar format is wrong, that might be the problem. Um, request, request. So we're gonna go here and I need to see actually what the jar format is. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta, cookies, so jar. If true, uh, you can use your custom jar, see examples in the section below. I guess we need to convert them, right? Because we're probably like the cookies we have are um, like browser cookies, I guess, and it's gonna use, um, this is some sort of request JS, or I guess it's maybe a tough cookie or whatever, like the Node.js format for them. Now, how the hell do I convert that? Okay, so, so we need to create a jar. Um, I guess, yeah, let's let's do it inline first and then extract it into a function. So create this jar. And then um, cookies for each. So we're gonna get cookie now, and then there should be request cookie something. Okay, um, and of course there is no so the, now there is some example. Okay, there is, ah, okay, jar set cookie cookie URL. Okay, so this should be um, key value. And then this should be, okay, const cookie, let's call it data. So cookies, request cookie, key value, and then we do this jar set cookie, cookie URL. Okay, so key value now. Um, did I know I didn't close it? So domain. Man, I guess all of them will actually be crunchier, all right? Cause, oh no, we have some other ones, but we're not interested in that. Twitter. Yeah, this is, this is the times when you figure out like, you know, if you're not running ad blocker, this is how much crap you get in your cookies for like tracking you. Okay, so we are actually need to filter cookies by domain. Uh, whoops. So first of all, we're gonna go here into cookies. Uh, where do we have auth method? Get, yes, and we need uh, filter cookie so that cookie domain includes uh, crunchyroll.com, right? Because we don't actually interested in anything else here. What you don't like here, pretty formatting. Yes, please go for it. And um, yeah, I guess this with cookies. There you go, okay, so we do that which means then that be, will be the only the Crunchyroll cookies, which means that I, th okay, let's first uh, re-log, see that the cookies are actually only the Crunchyroll stuff. Yeah, 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 I know you cannot read it, so you're gonna like leg like out. Uh, key is not defined, what do you know, like here. Okay, yeah, it's the same, yeah, okay, it's fine, this is expected, then log back in. I think it should be like 50 cookies, right? I mean, it's just like, saves cookies undefined. That doesn't seem right as well. Okay, um, what am I doing wrong? Oh, God damn it! I'm doing this wrong. 
Okay, if we started, we should actually see saved cookies and we can just validate them. Yeah, there you go. Cookies 12, that looks better. Path, um, got domain. So this is some Google advertisement crap. But we can have it. There's the session ID that we're actually interested in. There's some other cookies, CD, whatever that means. Okay, uh, cool. So, and all of them belong to the top level domain because I don't even think that Crunchyroll has any other domains actually. Cool, looks good. Okay, so what we need to do now is take those cookies. Uh, wait, I closed it. Yes, I'm an idiot. Let's not do that. Uh, we actually need to look at the cookie here. So we have name and we have value, which means this is going to be data name and this is going to be data value, right? And the URL is going to be the base URL all the time. Um, expiration date, we don't really care about everything else here, are we? So I accept it's going to be a base URL. Wait a second. And then it's going to be the data path, I think. And let us try to run that. Uh, okay, it might be executed a bit early. Um, if so, if uh, this auth cookies, let's just put a throttle on it basically. I mean, we have to figure out the um, way to initialize it properly. And I guess the whole app has to be like shown some loader or something. So I have to introduce the initialization procedure that would say like, hey, this plugin is still loading. Okay, if it's null, then we say await sleep 10 return get my series. Um, this get my series, right? And then we just write a quick and dirty sleep function here. Um, time, which is gonna be new promise resolve um, set timeout resolve time there you go okay so that should theoretically be sufficient okay cool uh, it actually works the question is is it the data that we are supposed to see is it actually my list uh, it's all in German for some reason. What the f um, okay. Yeah, it seems to be my list, but everything is in German. Where? Um, here's the question. Do they use cookies to set the language? Okay, if you do that, screw you. Ah, right, it's gonna, it's gonna redirect us right away. Uh, no, okay. Here's the question. Um, wait a second, inspect. Application, uh, cookies, cookies, cookies. Crunchyroll.com. Not blocking, I have no idea what that means. But it says to D, no, that's, that's to Twitter again. Jesus Christ. Um, how the hell do they know I want this in English? Language. Okay, let's see what that actually does, Deutsch. So this sends network request to where? Uh, headers, cookies. Ah, C locale, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just force this to always be um, add uh, auth cookies force in English language. Again, this is, you know, theoretically something that uh, should be um, configurable, but we will get to that point maybe at some point if, if we're not bored by that time yet. Okay, uh, and US, I guess, right? So if we Click on NUS right now and check the request. OK, 
Come on. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, we just need that force English language and that should work and then get request HTML. Okay, um, kill that restart. Please tell me it's in English. Okay, there we go. And it no, really? I, oh wait, I guess maybe it's stored in the, so I guess we have to do it afterwards. Because it gets all, probably gets all written, right? Let's see. And uh, no, it's still jar. What the? Come on. Um. Okay. Let's do it this way. Console log. So we can actually see all the cookies. Maybe the conflicting cookies just doesn't work. So we have to filter out. No, there's wait. There's no locale at all there. See? Um, of cookies, see user ID, user key. Yeah, there is no locale at all. So it's not only the cookie thing. Is there something else? So now we have maybe it's accept. No, but I mean accept language there should be in US as well, I think. Unless Chrome takes random language. So let's see this request. Accept language and US. Okay, this is my browser setting, right? Okay, now we have this locale D D. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna just take this cookie. We're gonna copy it, and we're gonna close this as we don't need it. We're gonna paste it over here. We're gonna now switch back to English. Oh wait a second, is there any other upgrade requests? Blah blah blah. So this is it is a get method. So basically, it just sets a cookie and refreshes the page. It seems at least from this set cookie. See message is deleted. Uh, no, this is something that we're not interested in. So let's try to switch back to US. And open that part and uh, there we go, come on. Okay, insert that. Um, yeah, we can kill this. So let's see, this is exactly the same. This is also exactly the same. This is also exactly the same. And this, and this, and this. Okay, this is also, session ID is obviously the same. CF clearance is also the same. PHP session ID is the same. Block track is the same. User ID and user key, and this is also, so the Literally, the only thing that is different is locale uh, cookie, right? Oh, wait a second. I'm an idiot. Um, so we have to do that, right? Of course, it doesn't work because I missed something. <laughs> and please tell me it's English. Victory. Okay, cool. Um, now, 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 okay, we don't need that anymore. So we just do the same thing we did before, right? We load that into Cheerio and we parse the page. Um, okay, here's the thing. How do we parse it? The thing is that there is no, or maybe there is an information about series is that we just don't see it here. That's a good question. Okay, let's see. So we get this diff wrapper Lee series. Okay. So first of all, let's find this main content thing, I guess. Um, main content, which will be this is ID. Okay, perfect. We can just do that. Okay. Then we find Lee, which is a queue item items, which is li whoops you item within main content, right? 
right and this is the item so what do we have here content menu this is the menu this is wrapper wrapper so this is the main link this is the title of the episode and this is again the url of the episode image of the episode uh series info series title okay so we got the series title and next up this is not very useful and this is description of so we only have the series title here actually that might be a bit of a problem more options ah there you go so we got the url for um so if I extend it, we should actually see the URL. Yeah, exactly. This is the URL for Sirius. So we can grab that. We can get the Sirius title and URL, which I think should be sufficient to build a relatively simple collection. Okay, which means that we need to do const. Um, okay, I mean, we can just do it like this for now. Each, no, wait, we can do map, right? Uh, index elements um, so const elements it's gonna we just wrap it into the um, cheerio right away and what do we need to find first of all we need to find a that is class episodes okay const app link let's call it this way so we need to find episodes within the element and from that so episode title is gonna be um, app link attribute oh, come on title i think is it title yeah, it is title okay uh url const episode url is gonna be app link attribute href uh, what else can we get here um, we don't care about the other stuff so then we need the image with class landscape episode image this is gonna be um, no this is gonna be image landscape with an element and we're gonna get attribute source, right? Right. Okay, and then we need to find series title. Series title, which is gonna be series title. Um, I guess, yeah, that's fine. So it's gonna be text, const, uh, wait actually so we we're gonna get serious url for sure but we also i think it was an episode description and episode description is where uh here so it is um dot short desk within elements and we're gonna get text and just trim it for sake of our own sanity because it's gonna go with all those space bars and, and line breaks which is bleh. okay um and then we need to get what we need to find this left i guess text link should be suf no that's not sufficient so q controls um div q controls and then it should be a left i guess maybe like this and then attribute href and then we're just gonna return episode title episode uh, image episode url um, episode description series title and series url there we go and then that was like two array and we can just do console log items and see if that actually works or if I screwed some selectors up. Okay, we got some results. The question is Gintama. Uh, that seems to be 
a bit too much. Oh, right, okay. Um, I, I forgot to do that, right? Because we need to select only within our current um, current thing. Okay, uh, here we go. Gintama, Gin, uh, series style Gintama, okay. Overly, yes, that looks fine, I think. Um, no, that does not look fine. Episode title, is it? Oh yeah, it is, okay, cool. Oh, it doesn't show it here, actually. No, it does, here it is, tiny text, good. Um, uh, URL seems to be okay. Image, it seems to be okay. Let's just check it quickly. Cool, uh, it is quite tiny though, but I think we're good. Okay, let's just check randomly like last one. And it seems to be it. Yeah, come on, close, close, close the console, there we go. So last one should be, yes, yeah, that seems perfectly fine cool so we're actually uh, getting the items now so we need to render them now the question is how do we render that so the my items like the idea of rendering the last episode of what you didn't watch is the one that is very handy um, with an ability to go to serious the question is will that work with other sources like if we think Netflix wise or YouTube wise, I think they actually do the same, right? So you can actually, you can render the newest uh, content from the YouTuber, for example, and then link to his channel. And the same with Netflix, you can show the latest episode from the series and then the link to the channel, which sounds absolutely fine for me. So let's, um, let us do, okay. So we have those episodes in the series. Now the question is, do we actually need two or can we just go? No, we need two, right? Because we need to track both series and episodes that you have bookmarked. Um, the question is, do we need new databases at all? Maybe we just say this episode and this series is bookmarked. Hmm. Got to think about it. Okay. But first, let us edit the homepage a bit. So, okay, the homepage will still get all series. Uh, we don't need that anymore and series here revert that back and then we need to change so i guess it makes sense to make the um, nav bar components and uh, let's just copy the whole damn thing for now okay so what we need here is we don't care about that we don't care about any of this uh, and i think we can just do a plain function here and just leave the render method because really we don't actually need anything else format so we don't need the series and we actually don't need the div around so we only need this nav thing okay we got the settings on the right side and um, name nav left uh, nav menu if uh, so we're gonna have nav item we need actually two nav items right so we need the um, old series and we need uh, my series let's call it this way okay so I'm just gonna copy this link here and this is gonna be all serious and uh, we need to edit the slash things as well and this is going to be my series so let's call this my and this should just point to slash and then let's see want awesome icons the question is is there any good icons here ah, I know so we're going to use star for bookmarked because that makes sense I think um, and we are going to use a list maybe for everything. Um, yeah, why not? Let's, let's go for list for now and see if, if there's anything better later on. Okay. Um, 
and wait a second so now we can kill that here and say f bar right and import an f bar from f bar uh, nope what there you go okay cool so let's see if the nav bar is drawn correctly yep and i mean we're already on the same page okay so one more yeah obviously there's a warning uh, and i think it breaks so we have to adjust it a bit to validate for the current uh page right but if i click on ah okay right uh, this doesn't work actually not because of that but because i don't have a my things page okay cool um Da -da -da, let me think pages new my js let's call it this way just copy copy home here so my stuff um do we need we don't need link here and we actually don't need it at home anymore right um let's think serious we don't need serious here we're gonna have a special view for that so my episodes i guess let's call it this way get my series I guess get my series is also not a very correct name here but whatever let's leave it at this for now um bookmarked uh, you know what let's just call it bookmarked for nah, nah i don't like it okay i need to think about that a bit later but let's just leave it at series for now uh, this all looks fine and we're gonna have a different view here so I'm gonna say div Let's see you're just gonna do div um, slash div and then just gonna say JSON stringify um, s whatever we just want to see you know what the data comes in okay cool so let's also have the nav bar um, and in this case okay, you can kill the series and in this case we need to store the stuff into the bookmark series in here that's what i'm gonna do even though you know we don't really know about docs wait how do i use it i forgot uh so it's just okay you just throw it in there items there you go Await. Do we need to await it though? I mean, it's the last operation, so it doesn't really matter, but whatever. Let's await it anyway. Okay. Um, I guess that looks fine. So let's, let's see if that works. Okay. There we go. We got our homepage with a. Uh... Right. Okay. Um, I forgot to plug it in. my stuff let's call it my stuff because why the hell not and then there should be settings this should be slash my right and then my stuff um yeah that looks okay oh wait i god damn it i changed home uh, that is not very good Did I edit it home? No, wait, this is this is correct. Yeah, okay, this looks fine, I think. Okay, let's close home so that we don't break it anymore. Um yeah, that looks good. Okay, home still works. Let's click on my series. that doesn't seem to do anything okay uh, let me first of all let me just log here console log saved items um, items right so that we know that it actually executed uh, bookmark series okay so that's correct uh, deleted dog and cat yeah that looks fine so there shouldn't be any issues here Okay, let's try that again. Maybe I just didn't wait long enough. Okay, 
and I'm just staring there waiting for it to work. No, that's not how it goes. Takes quite some time. What the hell? Oh, wait a second. I. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, here's here's what I get once again. Here's what I get for copy pasting. Okay, my series. Yay! Saved items. Yay! It work. It actually seems to be working. So we only need to now format that property, right? So we need um, um, folder, say bookmark episode. Let's call it this way, for example. Let's take the episode template, index.js. Okay, so here import bookmark episode from components bookmark episode. And in this case, I am just gonna say bookmark episode, episode uh, S, right? So that, that's not exactly the episode, but you get the idea. Okay, format this. All right, um, why is it called home? Should be my stuff. Uh, did I accidentally rename? Home? No, home is fine. And we can kill that link here. Okay, uh, now, no, I closed it too early or maybe not. Let us just copy this one of them and use this JSON as reference. So let's see, this is the bookmark episode. Just paste it over here, um, maybe, maybe. Da -da -dum, JavaScript. Format. Um, oh, I guess it doesn't. Uh, I need to install some beautiful, uh, like generic. I, I'm now using the prettier for formatting JavaScript, but since the beautify that also formats JavaScript interfered with it, I had to delete it. So now I need some sort of a JSON uh, formatter. So I have to use like Atom or whatever for that. There we go. Okay. Okay, um, so we got what we got episode title, we got episode. Okay, let's call it. Um, wait, wait, what did they call the property episode? Yeah, it is episode. Okay, episode image, right? Episode title. Um, just rename it a bit. Episode page, episode ID. Uh, Ah, right. Okay. So it has to be, it has to be, yeah, right. The underscore ID should be episode URL, right? This is what we have to, no, I mean, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Okay. For now, I'll just leave it like this. I need to think about the data structure because it, it's like, it's a bit annoying to work with it like this episode URL. Let's just use the episode URL over here. And in this case, we're not gonna pass any state to it because screw that. Um, what do you don't like here? Uh, non visibly yeah, sort of. Um, episode title, episode description. So if we do that, we actually should see exactly the same um, layout as with our episodes. Right, so if I click on my series, we should see a bunch of episodes here with uh, quite lengthy descriptions actually. But I guess it makes more sense to make them like linear and then, yeah, let's see, where's the Bulma IO thing? So make make them sort of like, like here, but add a bit more information about the series at the bottom or something along those lines. Uh, let's see elements. Uh, what do we have here? We have, com or maybe card again. Nah, that looks not not so nice. Media object. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go for this box. So we got the arm um, class media. 
Yeah, yeah, I guess let's, let's go for this. So we got what article, but I'm just gonna go for it. Div class, uh, what was it? Media, right? Media. Okay, um, div class, a figure. Yeah, let's, let's do this. So we're gonna get figure on the left. Class name. Image source. So in this case, this is, should be the image. And we don't care about this. So on click, yeah, let's put on click on the whole thing. Um, title, subtitle. Okay, let's see media content. So we don't need those buttons in the bottom, so we can skip that bottom part. But it's inside the div, so we're gonna have to deal with it anyway. So let's see um, format. Okay, it cannot format because class is, oh, and break is not closed. Class name, and where's the break that is not there? Okay, there we go. Okay, um, I'm gonna take this, paste it over here. So we're gonna be strong episode title. So this is gonna be the episode title. This is gonna be our episode, uh, what, what was it? Serious title. And then actually we should, we can make it into, um, yeah, we can make it into a link that actually points to episode serious URL. And I think that's actually not quite correct, but um, hey, Let's go with it for now. So this will actually redirect to a non-existent URL, but okay. Uh, do we need those spaces here? I guess let's leave them. I guess that will be looking a bit nicer, right? Um, and this is the nav that we don't actually care about. And uh, format. P ah, yeah, this is the P that we don't need. This is the, okay, this is what we need. And um, what do you don't like again? Non-visible, yeah, sort of. And uh, here in this case, we don't need to chunk it. So we can actually remove that. We just need to map it into column and this make div class name. Um, Columns, so we just basically have like rows, right? So with like single column format, there we go. Um, I think that should look nicer, but let's have a look. Um, chunk map is not a function. All right, uh, yeah, because it is not gonna be a chunk here, it's gonna be an ep episode, right? S. Yes. Um, so key can actually be proper key this time around. We don't need this I here and this can be just like this. Much nicer code. Okay, restart that. That looks actually worse. <laughs> Is that because of the columns I did? Because maybe I don't need columns here. Oh yeah, right, because they're all gonna be, okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense, that makes sense. Um, maybe we just do this. Format. Nope. Um, do we actually need these columns at all? Like I'm doing silly things. And there we go. That looks much better. Uh, there's some padding problems, but it's fine. So this is our enemy. This is the description, which actually should be on the next line, right? So we need to tweak that. That's why the uh, break was there. So we can do that. Yep. Let's see. Um, yeah, that should be fine. So my series. 
and there you go that looks much better although there is a lot of empty space here. ah yeah that's gonna break probably right because the there's no url of undefined yeah okay um so the episode in this case um I wonder if we can make it work without too much trouble. Let's give it a shot anyway. Okay, so the episode is ID, URL, image, title, description, series. So in this case, ID is uh, episode, 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 URL. URL is also episode, episode, URL. Image is episode. Um, episode image, episode, episode title. So this is sort of conversion, right? To it, episode, episode description. And this should be episode uh, series URL. There we go. I think that should make it work. Um, yeah, let's take this one. Invalid URL cause uh, okay is it, does it should be the full URL of it then because I don't remember are we using the full URL in episode thing here okay lady you know what console log um, episode Let, let's just open some episode and see because I don't remember that already it's like the uh, importance of a good documentation on your own project. <laughs> which we don't really have at the moment. Okay, so this is how it looks. Close that. Um, we don't need this anymore. Let's have a look here. So what do we have again? Okay, so this is underscore ID. This is revision. Description is straightforward, image is straightforward, series is straightforward, title is straightforward. Yeah, URL includes uh, the full thing. Okay. So what we can, no, I, I mean, I think it, it's fine. So in this case, we can just hack it and say, fine. Um, maybe the one exposed, no, it's fine. We just, well, let's just make it, uh, I mean, the thing is, so I don't, I don't wanna like, commit and write it uh, completely properly because I'm not still not convinced that this is the correct database structure that we want to use, right? Because we want to be able to, whenever you load the list of the series or episodes, you want to be able to see the progress on them. You want to be able to see if they are bookmarked or not and so on and so forth. And with the current layout, I'm not so sure it's going to be easy to do. So I'm going to like do a bit of thinking about that. Okay, um, I think it was a slash in there, right? Um, so it should be like this. Yeah, that looks fine. So theoretically that should work. Let's try. My series and uh, yes, there you go. We should theoretically see Gintama now. Nope, status code error. 500 okay I guess uh, something is not quite working maybe that's a server error or maybe we just screwed something up okay yeah, yeah we're in the same pass uh, let's try oh right uh, because Gintama is not available in the Germany right I think so I cannot actually watch it unless I'm using VPN which is annoying as hell, but uh, okay, let's try something that is available. Um, I don't know, is, is Royal Tudor available? No, no. Okay, there is some error, blah, blah. That is weird. Okay, may, but wait a second. I'm just, I'm curious. Maybe I'm just the data is malformed, that's why it can load. Does Berserk still works? It's our like test video. Yes, it does. Okay. So I guess that means that we are sending something in a wrong way. But okay, I mean, I think that that is a, that is a thing for later on, right? So this is gonna be 
now and I'm just gonna leave a to do here or I guess fix me make it work okay uh, we can kill that part because we already need it and um, yeah let's commit that um, rem so we don't need this yarn clean thing okay git commit add my uh, bookmarks page and render and do a basic episodes render on it I guess that will be it for um, today's live stream so unless you have any uh, questions or comments on what I did maybe you saw some place where I screwed up I will be happy to fix that uh, do let me know um, I think I'm gonna be live for a few more moments and um, if not then well thank you for watching thank you for staying with me up to this point and you know see you next time Bye.